Deuteronomy 32, 20, and he said, I will hide my face from them and I will see what their end shall be for they are very forward generation children in whom is no faith. That's a sad, sad verse of Scripture. That's a diagnosis of that generation. It could be said of Hunter's generation too. If you don't believe me, go to social media, go to the news, go anywhere you want to go, and you'll find our Hunter's generation leaving class because something didn't go right and sitting out in the grass and marching in the streets. You don't even know what far. I want to read you an even sadder verse of Scripture, and that is... Turn with me, if you would, please, to Hosea 4 and verse 6. Now, I'm not going to leave you like this. This is a diagnosis, but I'm going to give you the remedy, okay? We're not going to stay down. We're going to get up here because God's able. We quote this verse of Scripture. It's the most misquoted, other than the one people quote about money is the root of all evil, which is in Timothy. Actually, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. This is the second, uh, possibly second most misquoted verse of Scripture in the entire Bible because it leaves off the rest of it. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I want to preach to you today on this generation. Now, when you hear that, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, that's what we think. Bless their hearts, we need to teach them something. All right? But let's read the rest of the verse. When you quote a verse, don't quote part of it. And don't misquote it. Let's read the rest of the verse. The reason we don't read the rest of the verse is we don't like the rest of the verse. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's read the rest. Now here's why they don't have knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Here's why they're ignorant. Because they wouldn't listen to me. And I will also reject them. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget your children. That verse sends chills up my spine. So if God speaks to you, say, yes, sir. What have you got to say to me? Are you, are you, can I get an amen? amen? See, the first part of that verse is real easy. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So I need to learn something. But if you read the whole verse, it gets pretty dim the further you go. Would you agree with me? Yeah. So we have a diagnosis of how you can get in this situation. You can get in a place where you're so far from God, you don't even know He exists. And I pro there's over 2 billion people on the planet that's never even heard the name Jesus. There's 500 million alone in India that have never even heard the name of Jesus. And so uh, as much as we're putting into our children, we've got to get bigger than that. We've got to reach all the children. You, under you understand what I'm saying? Because they go off to college and they're taught that there is no God. So our educational system has failed. Our legislation system has failed. So, but, but let me tell you something. God never put the responsibility of the children on education. He never put the responsibility of children on the government. He gave them to you. He gave them to me. And so it's our responsibility when we hear the word of God is not to reject it, but to listen to it and say, yes, sir, I, I hear you. What, what I need to do here? What I need to do here? And listening to God and doing what He says is not always fun where your children are concerned. Some children are shocked when they hear the word no. You can't do that. They go into tantrums and fall out in Walmart. I ain't never seen that like that. That was a no-go with me and my mama. That was a no-go with my children and their mama. We don't, no, 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 we're not, we're not going to do that. We're not going to tear the Walmart down because I can't have that toy. When you can't even walk through the house, you've got so many stinking toys at the house. Can I get an amen? amen? We might as well just suck it up and take it. It's in the Word of God. We might as well face the truth. The Bible says, and this is another, the third most misquoted verse of the Bible, you shall, uh, the truth shall set you free. That's not what the Bible says. John 8, 32 says, put it up there, Angela, so they can see it. Or Joshua, excuse me. You, you don't look nothing like Angela. It says you shall know the truth. Not the truth itself, but you shall know the truth. So you don't know the truth, you can't get free. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it's important that you don't, when you hear a verse quoted, you go read it and make sure it was quoted correctly. Because if you say the truth shall set you free, that's a complete distortion of what this verse says because the word set and make are two different things. If I set my dog free, I can also rechain him. Paul. The word make is a creative thing. You, if you get made free, you're not going to be chained up again. Do you see the difference in the word made and set? Two vast differences. 
Then you see the part about the truth? It says you shall know the truth. So you need to know what the Bible says. That's why I put so many verses up in my... I don't just read one verse and preach 30 minutes. That's why I'm constantly rolling verses. Why? Because you got to know the Bible. Because you got to go... See, this is how, many, how many hours in a week? 128? How many hours in a week? 168? Okay, 168. You're only here a couple hours. That leaves how many? 166. So you need to know the truth those other 166 hours. Can I get an amen, all right? We're talking about our children today. We're talking about our children today. We're not talking about mom and them. They done dead and gone. We're talking about our babies today. Are you willing to fight hell for your babies? Are you willing to be politically incorrect for your babies? If you're not, just let them go do whatever they want to do. But you better make sure they know this book because there will be a day. I've been preaching 36 years. There will be a day that you will wish and you'll lay awake at night saying, dear God, I should have listened to Brother Scotty. He knew he made me mad, but he knew what he was talking about because I've been doing it long enough. I've done seen it come and go three or four cycles, you understand. So this generation, Hunter's generation, that's the diagnosis. If you don't believe me, am I telling the truth? Ronnie watches news all the time. They march into the streets with signs. We don't even want to throw it on the sign. They just grab the sign. We just ain't. Whatever y'all want to do. Okay? Let me tell you how we got here. This is really going to... In the 50s, the pastors, and I'm a pastor, and I know that I will stand before God for what I'm about to say. I'm fully aware that I will. I do not say this disrespectfully. But while our preachers of the 50s was worried about Elvis gyrating on the Ed Sullivan show, Elvis didn't destroy this nation. While we was worried about what Elvis was doing in the 50s, they was figuring out a way to take prayer out of the schools and put abortion in. We was asleep because Elvis was saying, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Well, what, what? Is that harmful, really? Is it that bad? All right, the 60s come along. And then here comes the Rolling Stones, 1962. I can't get no satisfaction. Oh, my God! That's the damnation of America. No. If you'll find out in 1962, there was some other stuff happening in Washington that was a whole lot worse than the Rolling Stones. Don't forget the Beatles that had long hair. And my God, these boys are wearing their hair long. My God, it's going to send them to hell. Now, I'll tell you what's messed up. Is we're chasing mice while lions devour the land. I'm not telling you Elvis was Jesus. I'm not telling you God's sakes Mick Jagger and Keith are Jesus by no stretch of the imagination. And then you got Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin comes along. Oh, yeah. Stairway to Heaven. Going to buy me a Stairway to Heaven. The only thing wrong with that song is you can't buy a Stairway to Heaven. As much as I love Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, they're brilliant. And John Paul Jones and uh, John Bonham, brilliant. But you still can't buy a Stairway to Heaven. You see how that worked out for them? It didn't work out too good for them. We're worried about the wrong things. If you don't put this in your children, you got a problem. Now, let's see if there's a remedy. Reckon God's got a remedy for our sin. Reckon Ronnie. See, Ronnie is raised at Burnside. I was raised at Plattsburgh. Not a lot of difference. My mama was raised at Stalo, and my daddy was raised at Plattsburgh. We getting bad. We, 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 I mean, hey, if God can save us, He can save anybody. That's right. Y'all need to sum up. Come on now. Where was y'all raised at? <laughs> Your Brooks, she, Brooke was raised in Arlington. <laughs> Ain't no sinners out there, baby. <laughs> See, I know her mama and her grandparents and her great grandparents, and I won't talk too much about that today, all right? Love them all. Love them all. Kin to them all. Yeah. All my kin folks is heathens, and we need Jesus. It is what it is, baby. Can I get an amen? amen? So let's see if God's got a remedy. Because see, Romans in the New Testament, Paul said, where sin did, Jonathan, where sin did abound or where sin ran fast, it said grace ran faster. You, you understand know what I'm saying? I'm praying for my four babies right here. And if they start chasing sin, grace is going to outrun them to it. Say, no! And so is Mimi. And so is Mimi, all right? So, no, 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 no. No, no, no. We're not, we're not on that plan. Well, my friend is on that plan. Well, you need some new friends. Or no friends. You don't have to have friends. No. 
You can roll by yourself. I did a lot of times. Make me no difference. You can ride if you want to or you can walk. It don't make me any difference. No, I'm not getting that van with you because you're going to jail. I said, well, that may be true, but I'm riding and you're walking. So you can do life without friends. I know that's kind of a foreign concept. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. Because show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Remember that? They that walketh with the wise shall be wise. Let's find God's remedy. There's got to be somewhere in this Bible. Let's go to Deuteronomy 7, 9. Joshua, Deuteronomy 7, 9. Let's see what God says. Now here's the remedy. Notice, we need to know, Scott, we need to know this. Now, this is not like a no, like we know the score of the ball game, but it's a no, it's actually an experience. That no, Deb, it's a deep no. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, and the faithful God. This is our God we're talking about. Can I get an amen? amen. He's faithful. Which keepeth covenant. If He made an agreement, He said it, He'll do it. You ain't got to worry about that. And he keeps mercy with them that love him. Do you love him today? Okay. Anybody here hate God? I know people hate God. I, know, I actually know people hate God. But y'all love him today? Did it say to them that are perfect? Did it say to them that can memorize the Bible? Did it say to them that don't ever miss church? Did it say to them that give a million dollars a week to church? It said to them that love him. So that makes all of us a candidate. Can I get an Amen. This is the promise to those that love Him and keep His commandments, all right? You need to walk. You need to love, if you love Him, the other default will go into place. If you love God, you'll walk with Him. And He keeps His commandments to a thousand generations. Now, by my count, Mickey, America's not been here a thousand generations. I don't I'd have to do the math, but we have not been here, Robert Thrash, a thousand generations. We just got over here. Columbus found this in 1492. Well, they've rerouted him. Somebody else discovered this now. I don't know what all that's about. But nevertheless, I believe in Columbus. I'm a Columbus man myself, okay? That's what Miss Hensley taught me, and she was bigger and meaner than my mama. So you won't shake it out of me. I don't care how many times you rewrite the book. That's why I didn't go to the second grade. That woman scared me. The only thing I've ever been scared of in my life is Miss Hensley. God bless you, Miss Hensley. Especially. I know she's gone, but she was tough. She made my mama look like a Sunday school teacher. So when my Uncle O.B. got up there in the second grade and I was sitting up there by him on the thing, I wasn't going that second grade. I said, Uncle O.B., I don't want to go to school today. He said, well, I don't like school either. Where you want to go? I said, back to Uncle Bo's store and get me a cold drink. He said, that's where I'll drop you off. True story. Got back to the store. I got out. I'd be sitting up there drinking me a cold drink there. But about 1030, when days of our lives went off, here come Mama, my Mama walking up there. And I miss Patsy. I sat on that bench with my Aunt Ima Jean, and she didn't care if it went to school or not either. I had a lot of aunts and uncles didn't care whether school or not, all right? But my mama did. And she whooped my in. She didn't do, we didn't have no timeout, no colors. I saw black and blue, okay? But we didn't have no color code. We wasn't on that plan then, baby. We was on the plan, get your in in this car, and you going to school. After about three days of that, Jonathan, you bangs, I realized I had to go all them other 11 years, whether I wanted to. I didn't even ask her to have to go to third grade. Because I already knew. You know what I'm saying? I remember the year before. Okay? God's love is to a thousand generations. Everybody say a thousand generations. Thousand everybody generations. say God's taking care of my children. God's taking care of my children. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't care what, everybody else is doing. I don't care what the neighbors are doing. This is what I'm doing. Because <clears throat> the Bible says so. Bible says now I want you to turn with me to another remedy verse of Scripture. Go with me to Psalm 71, 18. I'm sorry. Now also, 71, 18, also when I am old, very powerful scripture, when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength. In other words, God, let me stay long enough to show thy strength unto this generation. Hunter's generation. I'm going to be here long enough to tell this generation about Jesus. This is my verse right here. Say, Brother Scott, you're not gray headed. Well, I got a fix for that. You want her name? Okay. Okay. And I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Not only price this generation, but the ones that are come. I'm going to be around here preaching for a long time because I got a lot of work they have left to do. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm not just satisfied with my children going to heaven, I'm not just satisfied with your children going to heaven, but I refuse to give up any of them. So you don't know them all, but yes, I can pray for them. 
I can pray for them all around the world because it's, it's abominable what's happened to some children. It's terrible. This generation, they will see the power of God in the name of Jesus. And in the future generation, as long as I live, Ronnie, they will see the power of God. That's what it says. The righteous also, O God, is very high, who has done great things. O God, who is like unto the king? Nobody do what God does. Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles, yes, had some rough roads, shall quicken me again. God is re-strengthening me. I've been down, I've been beat up, just all kind of pain, all kind of stuff, but God's bringing me back. Can I get an amen? amen? I'm coming back better and smarter and stronger than I've ever been. Can I get an amen? amen. <clears throat> and shall bring up on me again from the depths of the earth. Verse 21. Verse 21, Joshua. I have just began to fight and preach the Word of God, and I feel no ways tired. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Wow. When God does that for me, I can change the world. It don't matter what kind of shape my body's in. God's anointing, Miss Patsy, can carry you. She can testify to that. That God can carry you where man cannot carry you. Because man's diagnosis, be it a fact, God's truth, Miss Patsy knows, will change that fact. Because she's not supposed to be here today. Right. She's not supposed to be here today. Why is she here? Because of that verse. Amen. Because some folks like us, they ain't 10,000 people on the earth that know y'all here. But God knows we're here. And Miss Patsy is here today because we believe she could be here because we read that verse. Woo! Jamie's here today because we believe that verse. Hunter, you, can, he, you don't have a burnt up face today because we believe that verse. Right. Kaylee Page is not here today, but she's 13 and walking because we believe that verse. And I believe that verse for me. Dad, we just getting started. We, me and you and Brother Mickey are going to quit hopping. We're going to just, any day now, we're going to quit hopping and we're going to start just dancing in and out of church. Can I get an amen? Because it's not over until God says it's over. And last time I checked, it's not over because here it is in the Word of God. So we got a lot of work to do. How many hours in a week? 168. Y'all, this is my hour girl back here. I like her answers better, all right? So, but I love all of y'all, though. Everybody say this with me. We love you, Brother Scotty. Love you, Brother Scotty. Now, I heard that baby's voice. They listened. They listened. I'm entertaining to them, but they listening. They listening. And it's just absorbing. They're in a spiritual atmosphere, too. It's doing something for them they don't even know. They know more than they even realize. They know one day it just pops out of their mouth. Where'd that come from? Well, Brother Scotty said. That's right. Brooks put something on Facebook last night that Maggie told RB several years ago he was afraid to try to do some kind of cartwheel or one of them things girls does. I can't do them either, but whatever. Anyway, he was afraid to. So Maggie told him, I'm sure you all read it on Facebook, said you either manage your fear or your fear will manage you. That's right. And Brooks overheard him. So Maggie was preaching to her little brother that I'm sure was probably not annoying her at all. You know what I'm saying? And so Maggie said, RB, Doc, she said, you either manage your fear or your fear will manage you. It's like hanging sheetrock, baby. You either learn how to work it or it'll work you. It's like fooling with concrete. When it comes off the truck, no, when it leaves the plant, it's drying. Whether you know what you're doing or not, whether you got any tools or not, it don't care. It's drying. So you either learn to work it. That's why a lot of people don't pour concrete because it makes them nervous. When I've seen them when the truck drives up, they just start panicking and running. There ain't no point in doing that. Concrete's going to do just what it did last time. It's going to dry. So you just need to do what you got to do. And that can get a little hairy when you go to the truck and realize you don't have a bull float with you. Okay? It can get a little tricky at that time. You have to get real creative and build you one out of two by six and a two by four. Uh, yes, Hilton has already done that because he's smiling. All right? See, sometimes you leave tools at home, so you have to make do. All right? God has given you what you need. Tell your children about Jesus. He's given you a Bible. That's all you need. This generation will be saved in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen. amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed.